Each day I bake two loaves of sourdough bread from dough I have mixed the previous day, and each day I mix dough that I will bake the following day. In this video I bring you along with me on my daily sourdough routine. Hi, I'm Ron and thanks for clicking on this video. I'm a home baker who loves sourdough bread. Please take a moment to click the subscribe button and notification bell, as well as check out my other videos on my YouTube channel. In this video, I will be demonstrating three completely different activities, all done on the same day at the same time. One, rotating my two jars of sourdough starter, which I do every couple of weeks. Two, baking dough that I mixed yesterday. And three, mixing dough that I will bake tomorrow. Okay then, let's begin. One of the first things I do each morning is feed my starter that has been sitting on the kitchen counter overnight. My two loaf recipe calls for 200 grams of starter, so I feed my starter 100 grams of mixing flour and 100 grams of water. I don't use tap water, but rather I use filtered water from my refrigerator door. I like to use the handle of a wooden spoon to mix the starter. Once the starter has been fed and mixed, I cover with a loose fitting lid and wait until it doubles in volume, which usually takes about two to three hours. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, every two weeks or so I rotate my two sourdough starter jars. While one has been sitting in the fridge untouched for the past two weeks, the other one sits on the kitchen counter where each morning it is fed 100 grams of mixing flour and 100 grams of water. Every two weeks or so I switch the jars. The jar that has been in the fridge is brought out to be used daily for the next few weeks and the old starter is placed in the fridge where it sits untouched for the next two weeks. That is what I'm going to do next. I'll feed the starter 10 grams of water and 10 grams of mixing flour to help it wake up. Then tomorrow it'll be fed 100 grams of mixing flour and 100 grams of water. Here I have drawn two quart jars of sourdough starter, jar A and jar B. After feeding the starter, I like to remove 200 grams of starter for dough mixing once the starter has doubled in volume and is still rising, as indicated by the dome shape in jar A. Jar B shows the starter has risen but is starting to fall. In this picture, I am showing the mixing flour I use to feed my starter. It consists of one-third whole wheat flour, 
one-third rye flour, and one-third all-purpose flour. I keep the mixing flour in this silver number 10 can in the fridge. I buy my flour from Costco where 25 pound bags of flour costs about $6 each. I buy these ice cream tubs from a local ice creamery for a dollar apiece which includes the lids. 25 pounds of flour fits perfectly into two tubs. Red is for all purpose and blue is for bread flour. The starter that I fed this morning has doubled in volume and it's time to mix the dough. Since the temperature in my home is 70 degrees, sometimes I'll put the water in the microwave for one minute which will bring the temperature of the water up to about 90 degrees and will speed the process along. To the water I will add sourdough starter, bread flour, and salt. The dough is mixed. I'll cover it and set it aside for 30 minutes until the first stretch and fold. The jar I've been using daily for the past two weeks is headed for the dishwasher, but first I'll remove the sourdough starter into this clean jar and put it in the fridge where it will sit for a week or two. The reason I keep sourdough starter in two separate jars and sometimes three separate jars is simply a safety measure. It's all the same starter but if one jar breaks or I can't use the sourdough starter for whatever reason I'll still have backup sourdough starter and I won't have to start all over again growing a new starter. It's been 30 minutes since I mixed the dough and it's time for the first stretch and fold after I wet my hand a little. Pictured here is a thumbnail of a video devoted entirely to stretch and fold 
and coil fold, as well as other aspects of bulk fermentation, which I have posted on my YouTube channel. I encourage you to watch that video for more detailed information of what takes place during this stage of sourdough development. While the dough I made today is resting, I'm going to bake the dough I made yesterday, which has been in the fridge overnight. I've replaced the use of parchment paper with the bread sling, which I really like. One slice right down the middle, then off to a 450 degree oven it goes. The dough is baked at 450 degrees for 30 minutes with the lid on, then removed from the Dutch oven and baked at 400 degrees for 15 additional minutes. After baking the bread, with a digital thermometer I check the internal temperature to ensure it's over 200 degrees. Almost always it registers between 203 and 204. After a series of stretch and fold and coil fold, the dough I mixed today is ready to be pre-shaped, shaped, placed in floured bannetons, and put in the fridge overnight, and baked tomorrow. Whoops, I forgot to flour the banneton. There, that's better. Thanks again for watching and please remember to click the subscribe button.